the season after the 97 98 included um Hasselbank so we had that firepower up front and in front of you Lucas Radebe as well that was the season when he really turned into into a superstar can you tell us about the chief uh what a legend um every everyone loves loves Lucas uh, every player every supporter just a, a genuine nice guy but on top of that um a fierce competitor um he would he would kick the back legs out of any striker in in training um <laughs> and you know it didn't matter he trained like he played and you know there was a there were times when when jimmy or or um you know latterly mike viduka might complain about you know well, what's going on we've got a game tomorrow sort of thing but that that was just him he was just highly competitive um and gave his all you know I, I've spoken to the, the physio on numerous occasions who says he doesn't even know how Lucas is going out there because his knees were so bad. Um, and he just kept going out there and, and giving everything to the club um, to the point where he, he physically couldn't do it anymore. Did George Graham spend a lot of time with him, turning him into the centre-back he became? Because in the early years, we kind of saw it. We moved around the pitch. Wilkinson played him in midfield sometimes. And it felt like, it felt like he was going to probably go his Leeds career would go the same way as Phil Masingo where he would kind of, he'd look all right in patches, but he would just drift. And then all of a sudden he just arrived as this complete colossus at the back. I think, I think that's probably George seeing something in him. Um, you know, he was very good at that and we were very well drilled defensively. You know, there was a lot of time spent on, um, you know, s scenarios in games, you know, defending free kicks, um, pattern of play where, you know, as a back four, we they try and break us down with you know a front four and a midfield two and we just learnt how to you know try and only give the chance at the you know the the least opportune chance if you like so what we got drilled into doing was you know if if you are overrun then the shot has to come in from an angle um, it's a tighter angle and gives me a better chance of saving it you know it was it was very much that that we did, you know, the, the, there had to be no gaps between the centre-halves and the full-backs or each centre-half. And I think George, when implementing that, saw how well Lucas sort of took to that role. Um, and that's what, you know, that's why he played him. I mean, it's, uh, it's an obvious question, but presumably it makes your job a lot easier when you've got someone like Radebe in front of you and you would have played with, you know, weaker centre-backs in front of you. What's the difference from a goalkeeping perspective? Is there less trust or is there more trust? Um, no, I mean, the more you play with people, the more of a relationship you build up, definitely, and you understand how, how players play. Um, and, you know, if, you know, Lucas was, was pretty quick as well, so you knew he could recover. So if there was a ball over the top, for instance, it would make, probably make my mind up not necessarily to come and try and clear it, and then you get centre-half and goalkeeper banging together. You know, if it was Lucas, you, you kind of instantly made that decision of you know there's a fair chance he's going to get back and clear it um if it, if it was one or two of the other center house uh, <laughs> shall we say who weren't quite as quick you know you might have to think about you know high starting position and and you know clear clearing it yourself taking control of the situation are you thinking of robert molinar there <laughs> <laughs> well big rob and big uh, dave weatherall came to my mind to be honest um <laughs> both really good friends of mine so let's hope they don't watch this <laughs>